Bro, your tea is light. You know if you let it wait a bit, it'll get darker. But I like it like it. Do you like it like this? You like yeah, your radiant tea. How do you have your tea? I like it black like the sky, like the night sky. I'll tell you something funny. Uh, when I went to Iraq the first time, I told them that, you know, I want my tea nice and black, but I don't want any sugar in it. And everyone was like, I don't remember my cousin was like, don't say you don't want sugar. They'll know you're a foreigner. I'm like, no, but I don't take sugar in my tea. Uh, needless to say, they put a bit of uh, tea in their sugar and they drink it. <laughs> but yeah, man, I, I absolutely love the taste of tea. The actual tea, I love the taste of it. So Interesting. So how many teas do you have a day? Uh, bro, well, before I used to have a lot of tea. Because the black tea is pretty heavy, man. No, no, I like the black tea. And to be honest, I, I, you know, I, I drink espresso in the morning. I like my uh, black coffee Ooh, as well. Oh, that's strong. But I've changed that habit because to be honest, bro, I was drinking a lot of that. And you know, in our culture, in our religion, I don't know what it is, but we have a lot of tea. Everywhere you go, people are giving you tea. So now I've cut to one coffee in the morning, okay. keep, keep me buzzing, and oh, needless to say, a double espresso shot, not a single, and one tea wow. during the day, whether it's at work or in a, if I know I'm going out somewhere, then I won't have one at work, I'll have one when I'm out, or if not, I'll just have one in the evening when I'm at home. So you're technically addicted to caffeine? <laughs> no, 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 because I can have one really? a day. But what I'm telling you is the reason well, can I can't. Can you go a day that, about it? Exactly. I can now, but I, I wasn't able to before. Because oh. I was constantly. So no, no, were. I was. So you were. But well, you just said you have espresso and you still. Know, I, I, I enjoy it. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy having coffee. I enjoy oh, but you don't tea. crave it. No, like, I do crave it, but I can go so day without. So you're already. <laughs> No, guys, let me explain. It's like the smokers, you know? I don't smoke, I'm just a social smoker. You know, no, 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 no. I'm not addicted. I just like to hold it. Yeah, I like, I, like, I like the smell of it. No, no, listen, honestly, I can go now a day or two days without having coffee or tea. Good. But before, I couldn't. Good. Before, I'd get like. Twitchy. I quit. No, 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 like that, but you know what I mean? But how did you when, get rid of it? Look, I'm a, I'm a coffee lover, but I don't go to that extent, though. No, no, I, I, no, no, I know that was a joke. I don't twitch. But I mean, before, I would have two coffees a day and lots of tea, a countless amount of tea. Does that make sense? Uh, but then I realized if I'm in a specific situation, like if I'm driving long distances, going somewhere, or I'm traveling or something, and I don't have my coffee, I'd get snappy, to say the least. Because yeah. caffeine is addictive. It's affecting you. Yeah. Uh, so I chose to change my lifestyle. I That's don't it. know. He's asked me if I'm like you, if I don't get my coffee. As in, in terms of caffeine, it's just interesting. Nobody's actually said that to me yet, so I think I'm not addicted like you. Okay, <laughs> how many coffees do you have a day? Uh, Three-ish. Well, I'm not addicted Boy, anymore. that's no, a lot. Most of them. I don't do what black do you coffee, have, though. What do you I have? I don't have uh, Latte? espressos. No, no, I have uh, just a good brand of coffee. With coffee, mate, the, the powder, the cream that's powder. That's not coffee. Yes, it is. It's is beautiful that, coffee. Oh, that's not coffee. Um, yes, it's at work. I, br I take my own stuff because I don't like the one that we have in our machine. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's free and it's cheap. Um, so I take my own, like, sort of Costco big canisters. So it's there for a long coffee. time. Big three. How many do you have? I don't drink coffee. Tea? Just when I feel like it. I'm not. I don't uh, think I'm, sure? okay. yeah, I'm like him. I, yeah. I did go for a, for a phase where I was, you know, into coffee and, but Ali knows, I, I don't have any sort of, I, I, I'd like to think that I don't have any addictive, you know, habits in terms of drinking lots of tea or drinking coffee. Any drinks any, for that matter. Or <laughs> any drinks or anything like that. I'm, you know, I'm more of a, give me fresh juice, I don't mind. Even when I go out with, with my friends, I don't have anything. It's like, they have tea, I'm like, all right, I'll just have, what fresh juice do, you, do they have? I'll just have that. Every time yeah. we're in a restaurant, yeah, what would you like? Yeah, I'll have a Coca-Cola, I'll have a Diet Coke. Hardy, I'll have carrot juice. <laughs> <laughs> or water. Yeah, I just, I just, but this doesn't mean that I'm not addicted to something. What are you addicted to? At some point. You want to reveal that? Be careful. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah, addictions can be uh, anything, in any shape anything. or form. I recall during my exam period in, at uni, I remember I used to not be able to concentrate. I used to want to study, but I never used to have like that. You know, I used to say I'm going to study for like three, uh, two hours, take a break, two hours. And I ended up having four hours of a break, then an hour of study, half an hour of a break, and then 15 minutes. Of and I realized I was addicted to this. <laughs> uh, oh, the, the amount of times I used to check my phone for no reason whatsoever, wow. it was ridiculous. And I accepted that I was actually addicted to social media and I was addicted to my phone. And you know, there's nothing going on. So why do I keep checking it? No, no. So how I treated it was very similar to what you did. 
um, in terms of your coffee and tea. Uh, the first thing I did was as soon as I get to uni, or as soon as I need to do anything, I used to put my phone, switch it off, put it in my bag, and I don't see it till I'm done with what I need to do. That's so one. you went cold turkey then, basically? Cold turkey. Or did you have it in phases, like for the morning, first two hours in the morning, you would do that? And so then... I, check, I check my phone, you know, in, in the morning, when I, because I need to. I let the people that I need to let, you know, people that contact me constantly, like, listen, I'm, you know, I'm here, I'm going to switch off my phone, I'll contact you once I'm done. Switch it off, put it in my bag. Later on, at the end of the day, I used to check it again. Now, I thought I was done with it. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm done with this addiction. And I actually was. But then I noticed that this phone keeps deciding when it needs my attention, rather than me deciding when I want to pay attention. What I mean by that is I could be seeing with you guys right now, and I'll pick it up. Why? Because I got a notification, because there's breaking news. Or I got a notification because, oh, there's a, someone talking on the group. Yeah. Or I got a notification right. because I just received right. an email, and it's just a promotion, it's just a waste of my time. So I switched off. Right now, I've got no notifications on my phone. Oh. None of them show up. Unless I unlock it, it doesn't show. Very good. Very yeah, nice. so that was a way of getting rid of it. Very but good. how there long are... did it take you to realize you've got this problem? Until I was very close to having my exams, and that was at the time. But now it's when I'm at work, for example, <laughs> um, when I first started working. I used to realize that you know my productivity at work is not as much as I'd like it to be, and I'm not really reaching my potential. So it was a gradual process for me to, you know, sit down. To be honest with you, what I do is I sit down and I list the distractions that come to me. So every three months, every quarter, I have a quarterly review of performances in different aspects in life. But the main thing is another thing that I started to do once I realized these little distractions that I had. I used to list all the distractions that I had, you know, whatever they are, whatever causes me to be counterproductive, I list it down and I say, okay, why does it happen? And I reflect upon it and then I just, you know, take it from there. Very nice. Bro, that's really, I don't I've, think I've, I can top that. I've <laughs> noticed something actually recently, um, taking my daughters to the park, it's summer holiday, so, you know, I take them out every now and then and then you, you notice things that I haven't noticed before when I was young. Sure. You know, back in the days, you see the parents playing with their children, you know, uh, football or taking them to the playground in, on the swings. If you go nowadays and you actually look around, you'll see all the parents on their phones. And the kids are playing. And the kids are playing by themselves. And I've noticed it. I do it myself as well. You know, I've got a notification just looking and then I'm not noticing what my daughters are doing. And then you think, is it worth it? Mm. Am I really here to have fun with my children or am I here just to spend some time and get it over and done with? There was a nice social experiment <coughs> conducted, I don't know if you guys seen this, it's on YouTube. Uh, of, 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 uh, there's this guy on YouTube who tries to prove different social points. So one of them is that there's a bad parenting, one-on-one. Guy is taking his daughter to the park and he's on his phone. So he, the presenter of the show, he says, watch what I can do. He goes to the girl, the little five-year-old girl, tells her, come with me, and takes her away. And then the guy kind of gets off his phone, doesn't know where his daughter is, starts looking for her, goes crazy. Mm. And then the presenter comes with the daughter and with the mother. Uh, I think coming with the mother was a bit much because I'm sure they had like, some sort of <laughs> commercial problems afterwards, the <laughs> husband and wife, but it was really freaky for me to see it. Because yeah. you, when you see it firsthand, it's like, whoa. But it happens to both, not just the, the, parent, the father, no, 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 the of father course. and the mother. No, no. But I mean, the thing is, sometimes you might fool yourself in a way that you say, I'm actually not addicted. No, no, I'm actually doing this for, the, for a living. And as an example, in, 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 in my job, I have to be on my phone a lot for social media advertisement or promoting certain products online. I have to look at the results. I have to check how they're doing. Don't do that. Don't point that at me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because I don't like the guy with the moustache. <laughs> I don't like the thing well, pointed at yeah. <laughs> So I fool myself that I say to myself, well, I'm checking my phone because it's job related. It's my work related. It's related to my work. I can't leave it alone. Sure. I can't not look at my... You're doing subconsciously, that, I'm doing it. What I found interesting is that when I went on holiday to Iran, I decided that I'm not going to connect to any Wi-Fi. That's it. I don't want any Wi-Fi. How difficult was that? It was very difficult. <laughs> it killed me. Wow. I mean, seriously, it killed me. And I, was, I kept on thinking in the back of my head, what if something goes wrong? 
What if a website goes offline and they need my help? What if something happens? I need to be there. I need to check this. This is my job. And I thought, you know what? I'm on holiday. I'm here to spend productive time with my family. Who cares? If it goes down, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. They're not going to die of it. You know? I, had, I had the option of having the email on my phone for work. Mm. I have never, ever accepted it. Good. Don't. I leave work. I'm that. Basically, you know, just on all these points, I think it comes down to being aware of what you're doing. Yeah. You know, it's just so easy to pick up this phone and it's so easy to, to just pick up certain habits and keep on doing them over and over and over and over again until they become part of us and they start impacting us negatively. So like the example you said about the social experiment, this guy, it could have been a real life situation yeah, where, could, exactly. yeah, where the kid was, could have been you know, taken okay. elsewhere and, sure. or kidnapped or you never know what could happen. Bro, when I saw it, my heart I just don't imagine. understand it. Can you, can you not, are we not aware of our surroundings? Do we not appreciate time? I think a lot of it comes down to appreciating time. I'm sitting here with my friends right now. I'm meant to be enjoying a conversation. Why am I going to go on my phone? What's go what else is going on? What else is happening? This is what's important. It's, the it's important that I listen to Ali's, all of us uh, you know, his, his problems or Ali's uh, just, you know, life situations or say it Ali or yourself. We can't, we can't just keep thinking that we can do everything at the same time. Mm. That's in terms of this phone, but this can apply to many other things. Absolutely, I can. And on that topic of other things, because we're talking about stuff that really, I know it's bad. I know it's bad and it takes away, it makes you less productive and all these other things. And which we, should, we should always combat stuff like that. But why don't we talk about the things that perhaps are affecting like our youth in our communities and stuff. And I'm talking about soul devastating addictions. You know, like you mean drug addiction and stuff? Drugs, alcohol, any intoxicant. And dare I say that M word, masturbation. masturbation. The, th the thing with the word addiction, because Sayyid Hadi mentioned having habits. Having habits, whether they're positive or negative, is different from addiction, I think. I think it, addiction is when you feel like you can't live without a specific thing. And I think with it comes a negative connotation. Uh, one thing we should keep in the back of our minds, being that we are Shia Muslims. Number one, we always hear that khair al umuri al sataha. The best of things are those that are, um, how would you say al sataha in English? Sorry? Khair al umur al sataha? Translate that. The English. best of things are what's in the middle. So basically, just balance. Balanced. Having, okay. ba having balanced. And I told you once when I was in Najaf, I spoke to one of the scholars who told us, uh, who told me that our madhab, our sect is the madhab of, the madhab of Tidal. And Tidal in English comes as moderation. Everything moderation. in moderation. That's the word he has. Yeah, yeah. Right? So people sometimes ask, oh, but I can be addicted to something in a good way. The thing with being addicted to something, it comes with a no negative uh, connotation that you can't live without it. Yeah. And there shouldn't be anything that you can't live without. Obviously, apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but even through that, if you do only ibadah, there will be taqsir, there will be a shortcoming in your other aspects of your life. Sure. That's why shul ibadah, working is a form of worship. Yeah. Ad-darasa ibadah, studying, seeking knowledge is a form of worship. There's different times of t uh, types of worship. So we shouldn't really have that kind of nature where we're so addicted and reliant on something. And unfortunately, we are slaves to our desires in this modern world that we're living in. It's such a problem. Um, and I'll give you something that somebody told me once, and it's something beautiful, and you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to explain it in my own way. But the main point is that human nature, us as humans, we have something in our fitrah, in, 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 in our innate nature, that gives us this thing where we like to be slaves, as in we, we, we like to be followers. followers, right? So what does that mean? That means, in like, we can be slaves to materialistic things. A lot of people don't realize it, but they're slaves to money. You spend your whole life running after money, chasing after it. You want that money so much, yeah. right? Some people can be slaves to other things. The actual fact is, whether we like it or not, maybe the use of the word slave is a wrong one, but I'm trying to paint a picture for you. Whether we like it or not, in our primitive nature as humans, in our innate, al-fitrah, we have this kind of thing about us. 
So are we really free when we have this kind of uh, nature where we want to be slaves to this or that? There's only one way we can. And this is how you can be addiction, this is how you can be everything. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows He made us in a specific way where this is what we need. So He says, Abdi ata'ni, be my slave. When you become the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nice. you do find freedom. Why? Because you don't care about the money anymore. Yeah, yeah. You don't care about the fancy clothes. You don't care running after this. Nice. You don't want to be addicted to sex. You don't need to be addicted to drugs to make yourself feel better. So you become a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you find freedom. In everything else, but there is pressure. And that's though. the best way. But there's a lot of pressure within the youth. I mean, if you you say you don't, don't go on social media, you switch off your phone. There is that pressure. You know, am I missing something? Is something happening that I'm not part of? I don't know what's happening. With there's a new trend coming out, and I'm not going to be part of it. Sure. Within the youth, there is this pressure. So how do you how do you combat that? How do you get them to focus on on, on other things? I think rather than just youth. I think this answer may apply to everyone. Yes. Surah Al-Isra, uh, Ayah 70. What does the Ayah mean? It means... Paraphrasing. Um, yeah. Um, we have dignified... Mankind. Mankind. And we have basically dignified, dignified them upon all, the, all sorts of creations. Sure. So the first thing we need to realize is realize our worth. I think if we realize that if I know that my we're, we're taught pride and dignity from a young age, not explicitly, maybe, maybe it's just, you know, we're just taught, you know, that you need to be, you need to dress in a certain way. So you're not looked at in a certain way. You need to carry yourself in a certain way. So you don't have a particular reputation. This all comes down to dignity and pride. And having dignity is something key in our religion as well, as the Quran says. So when you think about your actions and you think about the little things you do, whether it's in front of people or not, mm. you realize that some of these things that you're doing, they go against the, the, it goes against what dignifies you. So if you think of, for example, drugs, yeah. what does it do? What does it do? I can't say because I've not been through that experience, but when you read through it and you look at people that get drunk or they get high or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. they lose their dignity. They do, they're not dignified anymore, they're out of character. They start doing funny stuff. And they, I think all of these actions, whatever the addiction is, it can be applied to anything, um, anything negative. Um, it's to fill a hole that you have in your life. Mm, free time. You're trying to fill that hole. The best way to fill that hole, Sayyidina... Well, do you agree that... No, no, I, I, I agree with you, exactly, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. But the best way to fill that hole is through the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Ahl bayt Have you realized that if you're a slave to anything, if I'm your servant, there's a level of disrespect that comes with that, right? If, 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 if you see that I'm, I'm, I'm a slave to these drugs, people don't disrespect me. Yeah. SubhanAllah, there's one thing that I've realized in life, especially for us Shia, and it's very, very common. People, when they say, I am Khadim al Hussein, I'm a servant of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, it comes with great pride and dignity. Like I can be a slave to anything and people will look at me like, come on. How many times but as soon as you yeah, sit, yeah, yeah, think so about true. the people you respect. Yeah. When you go to the Hadra and you see the guys who are cleaning the Hadra, if you saw a person cleaning Ali Hassan's house, you wouldn't say even probably because of society, you wouldn't even say hello to him properly. Yeah. Well, he's just this. Yeah. But the person who's, who's, who's cleaning the floors of the shrine of Imam Hussein, you want to go and kiss their hand. Gosh. And what is that? What is that cleaning the shrines of Imam Hussein? They say that's the Sha'ar of Imam Hussein. And the Sha'ar of Imam Hussein is what? To remind us of Allah. And that is what? Sha'ira of Rabbil Alameen. وَذَلِكَ وَمِنْ عَظَّمَ الشَّعَارَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَ مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And that's what it is. It always comes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's so important in my practically, opinion. Practically, I think you always like the point of practically. I do. Yeah, course, which is true. Because theory because, is great, but now yeah, how do we implement it? Practically, that? Ali, I think... From these, from in terms of just any habits, you know, you know, we were talking about your coffee habit or my phone. By the habit. way, this is my second cup of tea, but I'm not addicted. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I think tasty. it's to find. Um, I think one of the brothers as well um, said it earlier when we were discussing it before. They were saying that alternative, positive habits. So switching the negative habits. Switching these negative habits and embracing some new positive habits mm. is pretty important. 
these positive habits can a lot of them can fall into religion yeah. and uh, subhanallah they somehow i end up finding a link to religion so for example one of the positive habits if you feel like you're addicted to whether it's masturbating or whatever it is that you do in your spare time <laughs> try to think how can i turn that into a positive for example why can't i go gym and build my body i said why can't Spare time I? sometimes can be a problem. Uh, and what does Fill that it with do? With something good. What does this do? Very good point. What does Fill this it with do? something good. Sports, right? Mm. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam encourage us to to play sports. Sabaha rimaa rukub al khal. Swimming, uh, archery, and horse riding. Now, of course, that's at the time then, but you can apply that now. Exactly. What other things can you do? You can go to the gym. You can play some combat sports. You can. You can socialize, you can whatever it is, sports not just is sports. It's fantastic saying this, specifically team sports. It helps sports. me a lot, say it. You, you, you learn, it helps you learn me how to so be a much. team player, you learn how to uh, kind of have that competitive edge. De stress as well. You, you lose stress from actually playing it, and, and it teaches it. you great things. Of course, it's brilliant. And it builds your body and it builds your, your <laughs> confidence and everything like that. You know, when you said, oh yeah, what, what, what are the new trends? What, yeah. You know, when people. Instead of thinking about what other people are doing, look at yourself and think. Do I look how I want to look? Do I look presentable? Do I feel good? Do I fit in with the group that I'm in? That I'm, you know, the social group that I'm in? Am I having? Am I saying the right things in in this in social settings? If I'm not, why? What else do I need to to what 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 am I doing that is stopping me from having the knowledge that my friends have? Mm. Ali is so knowledgeable. I sit with him and he says so much, but I sit down and I just listen to him. Yeah. Sometimes I can feel low. I think, how does he have all this knowledge? He must have put some time into it. So I go back and reflect on my own time. And this goes back to Imam Sadiq's hadith about reflection. This is how you know, subhanAllah, Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah and the Quran. They've said things that can go on for years, man. They can be applied to anything. Of course. So if you go back and reflect upon your own time and your schedule, and you just literally put it down in hours, You'll see that half of the day you're doing nothing. Yeah. You're either sleeping or you're working. So what about you? What about how you want to build yourself? What about the things you want to do, the things you like? This is going back to seeking knowledge and always uh, being the best version of ourselves that we can possibly be. Because if you look at the Shia like of Amir al-Mu'minin, if you look at the Shia of Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam, Ammar ibn Yasir, Abadhar, all of them, their, their main focus was How can I become better? How can I become better? How can I become better? And the Imams say The person whose who's day to day is the same as his day tomorrow That person is lost Tomorrow we should be better than we are today The day after we should be better than the, tomorrow Does that make sense? Yeah. So bro in your spare time And this goes back to another thing that we were talking about uh, A couple of weeks back in terms of uh, Like anxiety and depression Again shaitan comes to you Waswas al Khannas speaks in your ear. Mm. You know what? This tea is beautiful. Let me have another one. Let me have another one. I need this now. I rely on this. When in fact, the only thing I should rely on is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the provider. He is everything in my life. And you do have holes in your life because you know what? Life is tough, man. But if you fill that up with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have it so easy because we have Ahl al Bayt Ali wa salam. With Dhikr Ali, Dhikr Ali is what? Allah. So just saying Ali Ali Salam's name, you're thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's the most important thing. And I think even more important than all of this is today Hadi's paying for lunch. By all means, let's do this. Ya Ali. Ya Ali.